What is up, podcast fam? We're back. Uh, sorry, I said that last time when I had Garrett on, but I'm actually back now. Uh, we'll be doing these more periodically. It won't be every week, but they'll be periodically. Um, you see some familiar faces, some new faces. But without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. And my guest today is Miss Carla. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm Anyone great. Ever, How are this, you? I'm great. Has anyone ever called you Miss Carla? You ever get that? I feel um, like that's thing. Actually, my whole family on my mom's side is from the South. So I get Miss Carla May from far away. Oh, the wow. time, they even so. had the Carla May in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's definitely yeah. Southern. That sounds like where sure. I'm at right now, where I live. <laughs> and I guess, yeah. Oh, you're, you're a sweet thing. Miss Carla May. Yeah, I can yeah, see that. Yeah. <laughs> Miss, or um, what do they? Yeah, when you like address women in the South, you say miss so-and-so right yeah so, yeah I get it a lot <laughs> yeah I know I definitely I mean my family doesn't hear I'm here in the south so it's like yeah I get to deal with that and they don't but it's okay I understand. <laughs> it's sweet it's cute I love it it's endearing yeah it, it's it is I mean I've had some <laughs> older older ladies say they don't like it which is interesting so I don't, oh, okay who knows who knows I'm just trying to be polite that's all I'm trying to <laughs> when I say it so um well hey cheers um, yeah to us doing this podcast I'm excited to have you on I'm so excited it's my first podcast um but I've been listening to Bab Life and of course Festival Tales for like since you guys pretty much launched so I'm just like so excited and a huge fan and am super honored that you asked me to be here so thank you well you've done me a huge favor um for those who don't know she has provided me with some of the merch that I wear out and post about. And I get a slew of questions all the time about it. Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? <laughs> and um, I'm sure you see the tags. I just immediately, I just tag you. I'm like, I got it here. Um, and that's the easiest way to do it. But no, you were the first kind of person, clothing design company that like reached out to me personally and said, Hey, like what you're doing, like your stuff, yada, yada. I want to give you, you know, something to wear and wear it. And you also, what I really liked, and I'm going to be honest, this is what I hopefully like more companies, more people take note of this because they just, they should, is you were really like, Hey, you do you like, I'm just giving you, you don't worry about it. Just do whatever. And because of that, I felt way more comfortable, like, cool. I, you know, I get something and in return, she's giving me full freedom to post how I want to post about it and all that stuff. So um, I appreciate that from a creator standpoint, because a lot of times they, cool. kinda, they want you to do, you know, they come in they're like, oh, well, you do this and you do that. And you're like, um, I'm a creator. You know, you take that up with your <laughs> HR department and your film <laughs> production people and let them deal with it. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it was very nice. Um, and I, I actually have, I actually have your letter um, from the first thing you sent, which was the Pashmina. Oh, um, cool. I have it on my bulletin board still. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's so it was special. very, very touching. Um, but no, I'm glad that you're, I'm glad that you do and create the things that you create because they're, they're very unique and they're so cool. And that's why I like them. Um, and I think obviously, you know, a lot of other people like them too, and they see them. So with that being said, I'm curious, how did you get into this where you started designing clothes? I know you do it. Uh, it's like a side business for you, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm assuming eventually at one point you would love to do that full time, but um, like we would all love to do for our side work. But um, yeah, how did you get involved with like when did it start? Like start designing and stuff like that. Uh, um, I mean, I've been like kind of like artsy fartsy since I was a young kid. So, um, I don't my grandmother like taught me how to sew when I was like I don't know like 10 or something like really young um and uh I guess when I was in high school my guidance counselor told me that, that I could waive all my gym classes and take more art classes so I was like okay <laughs> sounds great so it just kind of like took off from there um I've I never did heard like that. that's crazy yeah, me neither. I was <laughs> like, like thank you <laughs> yeah, that's awesome that yeah right into your lane that's perfect yeah yeah for sure no I I definitely had a really really supportive upbringing in the arts and um I super appreciate that um and then I went to art school I did um actually it's funny I did a year in fashion design 
because I kind of wanted to do like fashion illustration. Um, but I took like one year of pattern making and was like, oh, you need math to do this. I can't do math. So uh, I switched from fashion design to illustration, um, where I have like a Bachelor of Fine Arts in illustration, which like translates into my designs today because I start with the drawing and I start with sort of like the graphics and kind of like go from there and um and yeah and now it's yeah my side hustle and I would like to do it full time if I could uh but yeah maybe maybe someday eventually we'll get there I think you definitely could uh I, you've got the designs you've got a lot of cool creations out there so t- uh, so take me through the process of like from beginning to full products so you talked you talked about you draw them you draw them out first like you were saying and then you then what like what is it from there like then it's piecing together like I have no idea how this works so yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah um no that's a really good question I mean I'm a big I'm like a big dreamer I like to take inspiration from like mostly everything um and obviously a huge source of inspiration for me is like EDM I love dubstep I love sort of like the heavier shit hell yeah and so um (laughs) taking inspiration from that music and like I don't know if that music or like if that song was like a color or like shapes or like what's the vibe like you know I I guess an easy example of that would be like excisions music where it's super heavy and like gnarly and like his whole thing is dinosaurs and stuff. So I'm thinking like bright colors and bones and like, I don't know, like gnarly kind of. Interesting. Bright stuff, colors like... for excision. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, I guess some people would think like black and red and like dark yeah. shit, but I don't, I don't know. I, his music just makes me happy and like bright colors, I guess, make me happy. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the correlation there. Is it makes like, sense in my head. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, you're the artist. I'm <laughs> by no means am I am I have I have no artistic ability. I can barely draw Oh, that's a, not true. Everyone I, has artistic ability. Well literally I, everyone. They yeah. just they just channel it differently. <laughs> that okay, that I will agree with 100 percent And that's what I was gonna say yeah. was I <laughs> am not like when I think of art stuff, my mind immediately goes to drawing and I cannot do that drawing stuff art wise what I can do is I don't mind I like being in front of the camera I like talking I don't really care how I look or whatnot you know so I can do that stuff I can't but the drawing I can do like I remember in like third grade we had this art class and they taught us to do 3d and I went to quick backstory I don't think I've even ever shared this I went to like a private (laughs) school private Christian school for the first like first through fifth grade so I was in a private anyway so they taught us 3d art and how to make 3d art by drawing and they taught us by uh a, by drawing a cross in 3d and to this day oh, that's so interesting to this day is the only thing I can draw in 3d I have I can do that in ah. like a box there's nothing else I can do <laughs> uh, and, and like I have the concept down with this basic thing you know yeah two lines and then okay I can draw it and make it look 3d when I get anywhere else, I'm lost. I've, everything looks horrible after that. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. It's just not, it's something about the art itself isn't there. But to me, that's why like what you do is another form of art of creating. And you obviously, you said you draw it, which now I'm like, I want to see some of these drawings because stuff that I can't do, I am like, this is sick. Like, that's like, I'm drawn to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And same. And I think that's why like I was, drawn to connecting with you and like helping me obviously like grow my business and shit but like you are creating content that I am not able to create oh did you see that I that made me yeah. giggle it was like for those who are listening it, like the my coaster, coaster wanted was, to be in the video coaster wanted, yeah I wanted screen time it was stuck to the, to the glass yeah sorry continue I'm so sorry no it's no no, no it's fine well I guess like the whole um idea of like you're attracted to things that fascinate you and maybe like things that you don't fully understand oh yeah um I think it's really cool and appealing I mean, I think that's the same we could both say with like music in a sense, like the, to an extent, I mean, like, I, I don't know about you. Do you have a music, any music background at all? Like any, did you do no, that no, I'm, so I'm really good at listening to music, <laughs> like so good at listening to music. <laughs> 
I love some it. would say like expert level. We well, are Spotify. You're sure. you're point oh one percent. You're the you're up there. You're the top. Oh yeah. If yeah. Spotify had a a score like Waze, I would be. Well, they give it to you at the. Uh, <laughs> they give it to you at the raft, and your Spotify Wait. raft. There's scores on Spotify. It's, it's not like a score, but it's like it. They give you like it. Like so, for instance, like for Seven Lions, for me, it said like you're in the point. Oh, one percent of listeners. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, this case, is embarrassing. No, I'm I, number uh, one, I would say <laughs> I got that for um, Sublime one year. Yeah, that's my guilty pleasure. I really like listening to Sublime. Anyways, like let's reggae, continue. right? <laughs> reggae, right? Uh, kind well, of. Well, yes. They I think are of reggae. them as reggae. I have some Sublime sure. on my playlist. I don't know what's wrong <laughs> with that. I don't know what's wrong with that. Um, yeah, but, but music is another form of art that like, Again, I, I mean, I have some music background, but to the level of, like where I'm going and attending, I have, I, I like blows. And that's the thing is like, I had um, a background with more instruments. So I had like three years of piano, two years of saxophone, one year of the trumpet. Oh, cool. And I can do those. And I haven't, I haven't picked them up forever. So I would be extremely rusty right now if I did it. But like, so I can grasp the idea of music, but then like electronic music, making it on a computer blows my mind i have no idea i can't can't fathom it i can fathom yeah. rapping i can fathom adding stuff together and i know even that now the beats are all by computer but like edm specifically is like this is you know we're only putting out the computer made music <laughs> essentially. Yeah. and like that blows my mind because to sit and like listen to people how they create it and look at how they create it like in the previous in previous episodes way back i had like sloth music on and i let him share his screen or no, after our podcast, he was like, you want to stay on and like, look at some of this music? And I was like, heck yeah. Oh, and that's he sick. showed me like, and it's like the way it is like layered out to me is like, it just blows, like blows my mind. Yeah. Like I, and everyone's yeah. like, oh, it's so easy. It's not music. I'm like, when there's like seven layers and it's like seven different sounds that form one and, and you hear it and you're like, I, I don't understand how this works. Like, it's, it's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's how. Yeah, exactly. But like, you could look at like a drawing and think the same thing. You're like, what the fuck is going on? But versus like, I don't know, I could like, you know, you're about to like chop up and edit this podcast. And to me, like, I would be like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. So it's kind of like to each their own, I guess. A hundred percent. And like, and that's the other thing that again, with like video editing is another form of like things that just blow my mind. And like, I want to learn that like, like the perfect, not the perfect example, but like Lost Lands recap videos where they like, or the, or the hype video, the editing for that is insane. I'm like, oh yeah, like these, it's like turning, and then it's like <laughs> comes out, and I'm like, how do you do this? And and um, yeah, th- those people that can, that's like what I aspire to, and I want to be one day is like creating videos you know, one day I'm horrible at editing, so I have a long way to go with that, but like creating videos excuse me the creating videos that like do stuff that are different and it's like because to me i look at that and i'm fascinated by it like yeah uh are you familiar with who like casey neistat is by chance i don't think so no worries he's a he's a bigger youtuber now um but he like he got famous by vlogging his life every day for like a year but he was a he was a film like editor and film creator beforehand like he did commercials for like you know he did stuff for big companies and small movies and stuff like that so he had a background in that and then started like filming vlogs and then filming his own stuff and putting it on youtube and like caught on but like he took what he knew from editing and like put his vlogs into like this weird story format and it's so unique and i don't know he's just the way he edits things is also like crazy to me i'm like it's so cool to just sit and observe it like rather than just watch the vlog and be like that's cool it's like okay, that's also, it's cool, but, like, the way he made this is also crazy to me. (laughs) It's like he had his own style. Correct. You know, 100%. Yeah, 100%. He was very, and he was very good at storytelling, too, which is also another, another form of art. Like, people that Mm -hmm. can sit and tell a good story, when they, if they can do that, like, you almost have to be like, dude, you need to be on a microphone. Like, you've, you've got a skill that you need to put out there because to be able to captivate people, or even take a story and know how to like, these are the parts that should be mentioned. And these parts are like, eh, we can throw that away. Right. It's like, I'm, I, 
am way over detailed when it comes to stories. Like I'm like, well, for, before we go, go and you got into this back part and like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like circling around yeah. and, I'm like, and this is why. And then people are like, that was 20 minutes ago. I've I still lost. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but, oh yeah. man. Excuse me. I'm taking a sip. No, you're fine. Uh, yeah. Video editing is like a total anomaly for me. Um, I have this like Really, I'm going to start, I'm going to like do my first YouTube video when I go to Electric Forest. I don't want to tell you what it is because I don't want to like spoil it, um, but I'm really you, excited about it. And I'm terrified of that editing. Or you, say terrified. It, or you say it because now you have to do it. Uh, actually, that's a really good point. No, I think I'm just scared of like, and this is like such a stupid thing to be scared of. I think I'm just scared that like someone will like steal my idea. Cause like so, I want to be the first, but I'm not going to be the first because I know it's been done a million times before, but <laughs> that's, that's interesting. It, it is something you think about. Um, but, but also I feel like kind of an asshole to be like, my idea is so amazing that like, I don't want to talk about it because somebody will fucking steal it. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> like, like the inner saboteur in me is like, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel that I have big time on things. <laughs> um i mean you know it's like when you start you kind of think like that and you don't want to like for me it's like one i don't want to copy people two which you don't want to do that regardless obviously but mm-hmm. um and then two you don't want you, you want to be original and have those things like like you said and you don't want to share some of them but as you start like working and doing content and stuff like that you kind of realize like we're all kind of the same and right. there's, there's there's our own voice, our own differences that like Your make own voice. us unique and attract different people. But like at the base, we're all kind of like doing the same doing thing. Doing the same thing. Know? And yeah, and that's what I mean. I've taken away from listening to like like uh I listen to Joe Rogan and listen to some of his friends that do podcasts, and they talk a lot about like the camaraderie in a sense that they have. And that's something now I've like really like is like they want to bring not only do they want to obviously be successful themselves, but they want to like bring up their friends. They want to bring up other people that are below them. Like they want to have, they just want like the community base around it. And that's kind of how they modeled it. Like Mm. Joe Rogan got big. Now he has other comedians come on that aren't so big and you know, they could have 50,000 followers. They could have 10,000 followers. If he likes their stuff, he's going to have them on. And then next thing you know, boom, now they've got a hundred thousand and then it kickstarts their career. I'm a big fan of that because it's like, you know, he, uh, not just him, but just that mentality of like, let's, we're, it's not, we don't have to close the door and like hold it mm-hmm. so people can't get in. We can yeah. open it to everybody and everyone can come in and view it and get, be a part of it if they want. And those who work hard and do the right things are going to be a part of it because they're going to grow with it. So yeah. It's, yeah. I love that. I do too. I do too. It's something, I mean, and I've been blessed in with this, you know, aid, Emma, um, Manny from Frisky Hug. Like there's a few others that have been very kind and very instrumental in helping me get started. And they still are. And they're awesome. And I appreciate all of them. So shout out all you guys if you're listening. <laughs> but um, well, yeah. And same to to you. Shout out you for uh, repping my shit and like saying you'll post it and actually doing it. That's <laughs> rad. <laughs> I mean, it's good. So it's you've good. helped me in that way for sure. <laughs> it's good, cool shit, <laughs> and it's not shit. No, <laughs> that's like, my new tagline. It's good, good cool. Any K designs, good, cool shit. I actually, I don't know. It's kind of rad, kind of cool. Um, but like, it is good. It's good stuff. Uh, it it looks good. I wish I had it with me right here, but I don't. I should have. I should have. Uh, I should have had it. I mean, it's probably fine. It's probably like right there in that drawer. Yeah, but, I um, like. I I put this like. A, a robe on display for the YouTubes for now but and yeah. I wanted to put the other stuff but like you know I am sometimes still nervous about like the other stuff that I've made putting that like super front public uh because any day now I'd be getting that cease and desist letter <laughs> yeah that's... Either, either the cease and desist or uh the job offer so <laughs> one or the other <laughs> yeah it's very true it's um, it is unfortunate in that sense of the legal limits of like the call like the law essentially um yeah because you can't be profiting yeah. off their own symbol and stuff yeah it makes sense i mean it makes sense to me i think 
it sometimes it, what's annoying is it doesn't come down to like the artists themselves, right? If they're too big, they have a whole team and they even they don't even know yeah. sometimes about it. And like the team That's will true. handle it. And it's sometimes it's handled poorly and reflects the artist and blah, blah, That's blah. True. And, you know, you hope it doesn't come to that. Um, I think your stuff's cool. I think they'd be stupid not to bring you on board. By the way, <laughs> uh, let's bring this up right now. The shirt for Paradise Blue, the, yeah. um, the Hawaiian excision shirt. Yeah. One, one, I saw like two or three people with it. So I was like, yes. hey, I was like, you got that from Sunny K? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, that's the home girl. And then, you know, we would talk oh, yeah. for a bit and then move on. But my group that. of friends were like, well, like, where'd you get that? And I'm like, oh, I, someone, someone makes them and gives it. And she gave it to me to wear it and, and show off and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, damn, that's, that's better than the one that Paradise Blue made. And nice. I was like, I was like, okay. Was, he said I, what we were all thinking. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. I was like, that's what I said. And they're like, no, dude, a hundred percent. Like, like the, that one's like the paradise blue one's cool, but that one's really rad. Like that one's actual tropical. And I was like, oh, damn, yeah. like, I hope that'd be sick when, if next year paradise blue does something like, because they're going to be doing it again. All I'm yeah. saying is you should, you should, what you should do is you should try to do like a poll or something. Get the, yours versus theirs. See who likes it. Bring <laughs> the data. And send it over to them and be like, hey, uh, uh, I'd love to help design these. Like, people seem to like yeah. them. I don't want to get in trouble. You know, come, I don't know. I don't know how to approach it. No, I've definitely thought about something like that for sure. Like, yeah, I'd be like, I don't even want to get paid. Well, I want to get paid, but like, low key, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I just want to be a part of like this and what you guys are doing. And, um, yeah, I don't know, especially especially for excision. It's just like such a weird it's such a weird like mental battle for me because I am such a fan and like I make things inspired by his music and like the vibe and everything, but at the same time like I appreciate his music and like I appreciate like the whole like excision o sphere of like what the merch is and like what you know his whole thing is and everything and um so I would never want to like I don't know I'm it it's like hard to say I would never sort of like want to be like make it come off as um you know, fuck this shit. It's shitty. My shit's better. Like, obviously that's, oh, obviously. that's not really like no, what, no I, one... what I'm thinking. <laughs> it, it's like, it's like, um, what is it? Imitation is like the biggest form of flattery kind of thing. Right. But right. at the same time, like, uh, low key, I'm like, I see what you're doing, but I think I can do it better. And so, or like, what would I want to wear? What would my friends want to wear? And sort of like go from there um and again like it's not to say that I'm competing with that stuff like the light at the end of the tunnel is like yeah hire me for some shirts or something that would be like totally ideal but um I don't know I think at the end of the day I just do it because I like it uh are you familiar with um elevate 808 jerseys I am yeah okay so I think you should do similar, not, not jerseys, but I think you should model kind of what they do. One, you know, like people like me and people that buy the shirts, tell them, you know, hey, I'll feature you on the page if you send me pictures in. But then two, like come up with your own concept art and post it and see what, what, mm -hmm. the, what the comments ride. I mean, if things start blowing up, you never know. You post a TikTok where you post a concept art of an excision jersey or a excision shirt it blows up people like it mm -hmm. odds are he's gonna reach out someone from the team's gonna reach out you know what yeah I'm saying? so like yeah i something... love that idea i would just like keep a... for like my i think like when my mind spirals i'm like what if i do that and then like someone from their team sees it and they're like oh what else has this person been doing oh they've been profiting off of our symbol for like the past <laughs> whatever years like it, it's either like they wouldn't want to work with me because of that legal bullshit or you know on the flip side they could be like oh yeah we could use this person's stuff for well, our own benefit i mean you'd you'd like to think the latter but i don't know you never know all our, our artists are just terrified 
oh like, i get your shout out there i get that i get that with, with doing my stuff and sometimes i was so nervous for the longest time to just be in front of the camera for vlogs and stuff it was so awkward for me i get that in a different perspective i get it but the look on the flip side if you do it you know the answer it's over you know the answer it's either something's gonna something's gonna happen something's gonna happen right and, yeah. and and it progresses you do you. it it's over <laughs> and, i mean it's not over but like it's well it's, like uh, what's over one one of the two you know yeah i mean like the thought the impending thought of like what's gonna happen if i do it it's done that's mm -hmm. done that thought's done now you've done it now you're starting to do it and there's mm -hmm. like there's a freedom in that because if they take you up on it now you've got your dream and if they don't and it goes the other way then you know okay now I can go start making art that I want to make and designs that I want to make that will actually profit me because they're originally me. So like either mm -hmm. way, you're free in a sense. And again, it's not like so much the artists, it's more the legal team and stuff. So don't think of like, oh my God, Excision hates me. Like, that's not how it is. Like, it's yeah. No, not, no, no. no. That's definitely <laughs> not what it is. But like, yeah, that's what I, that's what, that is my advice for you is to put it out there because like, if it's big enough, they're not going to ignore it. They want, look, I mean, at this core, like, yes, he produces music. He puts on festivals, yada, yada. But he, he, he's a business guy. I mean, he wants to make some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, no, I mean, no, no, you had me at the data. That's a good idea. Look, Jeff, uh, listen. So here's the deal. Uh, you can make this much money if, you know, put a couple shirts, maybe a hat, you know. Yeah. Do a Paradise Blue does next year. We'll see. Hey, you never oh, know. So you never know. It's, you never know. Thank I mean, you. That's very encouraging. <laughs> no, I mean uh, that's you, you. But like you, you don't know that. You know that's just the fact. Like I have things that I'm nervous about. But like I talk him over with a buddy, and he's like, "Just, just, just do that." And I'm like, oh, "Okay." And I do it, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, "Yeah, it either worked or it didn't work." But like at least now I'm not sitting in this like impending like oh my gosh what is going to happen type stuff because like i've yeah, had you're right you're right i'm like yeah. sitting in fear all the time and like i i won't even like post it on my own instagram just uh, or i won't like do like fucking hashtag excision just for that simple fucking reason and like i don't they probably don't even give a fuck <laughs> i mean i don't know the answer i don't want to be like do it they don't care and then they do so i, I don't want to you know again, babs like, told me to do it what the fuck <laughs> yeah exactly i don't want that you know that bad rep but like but <laughs> on the real it's um i mean i've been there where like you're either you've got like an idea and you're too worried about doing it or there's too many things and you're getting caught up you know oh, I, I could do this i could do that like it it's your your own worst enemy and then like once you yeah the main thing from this takeaway of this long spiel is start doing like you start just gotta doing. start doing and then it um and then it will you know it'll work itself out like it, it just yeah. as long as you start doing things start occurring if that makes sense yeah yeah um yeah for sure because you're putting that energy out there and you're like you know a little nervous but you're still like I'm just gonna fucking do it and see what happens and like like you said like something you've been thinking about for a long time and just like finally pulling the trigger and as long as you can release that what if in your brain like I don't know that's maybe like one less thing to worry about oh yeah <laughs> and you're on your way to doing what you love doing it's gonna open the door for something yeah it's gonna open yeah. the door for something no mm -hmm. matter what agreed sorry to cut out there everybody we had a quick technical difficulty there but we're back uh, we were just discussing um the idea of oh my gosh i might have almost lost it the idea of like just going for it because just going for it yeah, just going for it now on the flip side of it it is hard when you're doing it as a side hustle and you're working full-time i mean we both work full-time at other careers um, mm -hmm. but it, it, it is it is hard people it's hard to balance both and it's almost like for you to make that leap your side gig would need to be like making <laughs> you know, essentially half at the bare Oof. minimum of what you're making you yeah know, like when you think about it like that's probably when you if it's if it's making half and you're not putting your full time into it then you know like if I put my full time into it I could be making what I'm making now mm -hmm. go for it and that's probably like a good rule of thumb I think, but, um, yeah, yeah, go for it. You should work. Oh, 
You're working from home though, right? You were saying earlier. Before? Yeah. Are you working from home full? Is it all the time or just when you occasionally? Well, how does that work? Uh, it's pretty much full time. Um, it's I was doing like remote work before the pandemic. Um, oh, I nice. Yeah, I lived actually in like Canada for a few years and I was doing remote like freelance design. And then uh, I moved back to the US and I started working for the same company full time and pandemic and all that fun stuff. So um, yeah, I am one of those lucky ones who got to stay at home and keep working. And I love it because like I feel more productive working from home. Um, I also, I mean on like my quote unquote lunch break, I can like dive into my side hustle stuff or like do research for like a project I wanna do. So it's sort of like my home office and my studio are one. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not so good because I can get distracted really easily. But um, yeah, it's it's not so bad. And shit, I would love to put my all into my side hustle, but the cost of living in New England, man, it's just like, it's way outrageous. The cost of God. living of anywhere right now, I guess, is outrageous. Oh God, it's insane. I mean, it's like, insane. It's like our generation, I don't even know if we'll ever really get to own anything. It seems that way. Dude, okay. it's just I know. Crazy. And that's so funny Amazing. you say that. Literally this weekend, I'm about to move into my boyfriend's parents' house with him back home where we grew up which is both a blessing and a curse but it's because we can't fucking afford anything and I want to like buy my own home one day so when you're 30 plus and you don't have any money like that's what you gotta do so I don't know man the struggle is super real but the vibes are high <laughs> yeah no the that's vibes are always high. that's crazy I I I um I thought about that. What is the word like toggled with? That's not the right word. <laughs> yeah, I, your mind right? can toggle. <laughs> I guess I, I, I uh, played played with that idea a little bit myself because I was looking at getting. I was looking. I, so I'm living in a new town. I've been here for about a year now, and like it's. I'm not, and then my my office started me off up here full time remote. Freaking loved it. I was like, I could live here because I could also travel. I love to travel. Yeah. Just, I don't like to be in one spot. I just it's just not me. Then they started having us come in three days a week out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the fuck? Ugh. I've been doing freaking four day, five days a week at home, fine for five months. And right. now you want me to come in? So just because they have a fucking office space rented and they're like, yeah. we need to put our make our money's worth or yeah, whatever. And yeah, some bullshit like that. <laughs> they built a new office, some two. Yeah. They I mean, they put a lot of money into it. I'll say that, but you know, maybe think that through. Um, yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's like. And then I was thinking of getting a, a different job and I was like, oh, I could go back home and like live with, but I just don't think I could do that. I did. I, mm -hmm. it's a lot, nothing against my parents or anything, but it's like, I, you know, I did that. I did it for, I said I would do it for a year and I did it for six months and I was, I was, yeah. I was done. And I got, when I was out, I was like, I am out. Like, mm -hmm. it's just nice. It It's not that it's not a, it's great financially. It really is a smart decision. Honestly, mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and harp on it because it is a smart decision. Um, It's just the amount you got to figure out like what you can do and what you can't do type of thing. Oh, I know. Um, yeah. You're saving a lot of money, but at the same time, it's like, what sorts of things can you handle mentally yeah, but, that's what I was gonna say. oh my god yeah a lot of boundaries a lot of like self-reflection and I think just like mentally preparing myself to be like okay you're going to put yourself in like almost an uncomfortable living situation it's gonna be fine like I, I love I love my boyfriend's parents they're amazing people but it's like I am preparing myself mentally to put myself in this living situation where it's not ideal I might be uncomfortable at times but I'm gonna do that and take that baby step to get to where I want to be eventually. And like, I don't know, maybe 10 year plan is like, I save up, I move into that dream home, which is like, you know, a teeny little apartment size house. Let's yeah, be real at this point. Tiny home. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I don't know, maybe launch my side hustle full time. So you have to make these like little sacrifices here and there to like see that, that end goal and get to where you want to be. And everything happens for a reason. That's, that's what I believe. So maybe something amazing will, will come out of it. So. Oh, I mean, a hundred percent from like a strategic standpoint of like, I'm going <laughs> to save money and start my business and yada, yada, like a hundred percent. 
the issue mm-hmm. for, for most of us is following through with that. It's, you know, yeah. and, I, and I'm not, I'm not harping on you and saying you won't do it. That's not what I mean at all. I'm just saying like, it is very hard. It's hard for even me like now, like to say like, Hey, I want to do this stuff and I want to do this yada, 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 and be consistent with it. And then, you know, mm-hmm. all my friends want to, Hey, let's go out and let's go out to the bar on Thursday and watch the game. And I'm like, shit to do mm-hmm. and, you know it, and that's mm-hmm. that's where it, the the challenges come in and um yeah it's 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 either way you'd have that though that's the way I look at it and it's like but there's also like a saying of like how much how much shit you're like willing to eat is how much mm, you'll reward, yeah. you know, reap the rewards later like or how broke are you willing to go and how well, you know how far down are you willing to go because then you're going to have that much more of a way up so mm-hmm. i've seen that before too i mean i don't know if that's an actual saying but i've definitely heard that before <laughs> yeah i've never heard that before either but I like thinking it. About it, i'm like i don't think i think people have said it before on podcasts but no one's like that's not like a like a <laughs> it's not like a guy in a suit with like a quote like i ate shit for the, like <laughs> they just never like that like, oh man like, you need to make that meme and that you'll be the original maker of that meme and that will be the thing (laughs) i don't know (laughs) explode for me yeah yeah no that's funny um you have a lot of tattoos and that's not i like them i like i so i am just getting we're gonna pivot very randomly but we're pivoting i love Um, talking about tattoos well this is something else that we didn't have talked about yesterday that we're gonna (laughs) talk about so it's perfect um yeah i freaking i'm like getting into tattoos now so i get into um, it a little baby boy with only one now, but I had zero as of four weeks ago. Um, so oh, you just got your first I one? I just got the first one. Yeah. No I'm, shit. What is I'm, it? I'm inked up. No, it's uh, it's right here. Yeah, you're in the Cool Kids Club now. Oh, cool. Right here on my the wrist. Roman numerals. So some Roman numerals. Uh, I wanted to go something a little more meaning for my first ones. This one has meaning. Um, not that they have to have meaning. I hope that's that was that's not what I meant. But um, this one does. Um, and it's just my grandpa's birthday. We were him or close. And oh, that's great. So, yeah. Yeah. That looks cool. It looks like, um, like you had like, just like a bracelet on your wrist. That's, I wouldn't have known. It's like, not, I love okay, not it. to say that wrist tattoos are dumb. I have a couple ish, but, uh, usually you see that like on the inside of someone's wrist and yeah. I like how it's like on the top with a band. Yeah. That's, I, that's, that's cool. I'm not gonna lie. I had a buddy that did something similar like this. He had, Roman, <laughs> he had Roman numerals here and here. For his mom and dad and i was like oh cool and i was like bro i hate to tell you i like that and he was like i was like i'm definitely doing something like that and he was like i mean go for it so i switched it up a little bit he had his uh, sitting above the band so it was like a band and then the roman numeral was like above it and then below it so i just switched it and did it like all right it's gonna be part of the bracelet but yeah, yeah I, I i'm i'm excited i mean first of first of many to come we'll see you down the road oh what, yeah what was what's your favorite one that you have do you have a favorite oh god I I don't really have a super favorite because they all like mean different things like I all got them at like different points in my life um so okay how about this are you are you someone who gets them because you want like they have meaning like this is because of this is because of that are you just someone that's like I just got a tattoo like this is like both absolutely both. both and like I'm also that kind of person who's like we'll be talking to their friends and being like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. And they're like, they tell me don't do that. And so I absolutely have to do that thing. Um, But honestly, a lot of my tattoos are actually EDM related. And like, this is probably my favorite one for the listeners. It's uh, on my hand. So it's like a scary sort of like uh, creature from the Black Lagoon monster. And then like this- pretty woman so it's like I forget what that's called it's not a palindrome that's for words but it's sort of like two pictures in one and I got it because I love Skrillex and this was my scary monster and my nice sprite (laughs) oh that's the best song ever (laughs) yeah I get it yeah you know it's funny you said the when your friends say like don't do it you want to do it there's something about that for some reason that like for everyone when someone says like don't do it you're like Mm, I think I think I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> like it's just it. yeah. something about that in your brain that's like click all right now I know what I want to do yeah. like yeah or especially something that like will make others feel uncomfortable or not to the extent of like 
hurting others obviously like we don't want to fucking hurt other people but like there's something about um and this is even true in like some of my design work it's like something about something that someone would think is ugly and like maybe like not appealing that makes me want to sort of like take on the challenge and do it anyways and be like but look here it is and it's not ugly and it's kind of fun and like it brings joy or something yeah no i i get it it's it's yeah we have a a buddy that um loves to like uh it's funny when i first met him he was like i like i was like we were talking just met him that night and he was like yeah you know i like to I was like, I like to lie. And I was like, <laughs> and yeah, I was dying at that. I was like, you, that's like not something you just, but he, what he meant was he likes to just like say small little things that everyone knows are like, you know, out there. And like, uh-huh. like, for instance, like we were like, are you coming with us this Friday? And he had already bought it. We already, he bought his ticket and everything. And he was like, of course not. Like, I'm not going. And like, it's something. So we, then we were like, okay, you're going. And he, but he then he <laughs> plays. But then he'll like keep it up. Like, no, no, I told you guys, like, I like I got that thing with my mom. Like, you know, I gotta go home that weekend. Like, I'm not coming. <laughs> it's like, so he like likes to do that. When it's, when it's again, it's it's obvious. So it's not like lying because it's it's we all know that he's doing it and like we all know that he's yeah going to be there. But yeah. like the way he worded it was so funny. But like, anyways, you were talking to why did I get on that? You were talking about um no, that's hilarious. That's so funny. I just kind of like, or like one of my coworkers does that. One one of my um coworkers or like his friend or something was like, yeah, this dude, he didn't say loves to lie, but it was very similar. And he was like, he just loves to like make up shit and then just like run with it. And he's like, yeah, he like convinced me that he was like part Eskimo for like the first 10 years I've known him or something. I don't know, just like something ridiculous, but... <laughs> Yeah, but it's like one of those things that like you're you're not hurting people by doing it it's just like you're bringing joy and just having fun and way to bring us back on track that's what we were yeah. Talking about. yeah 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 that's exactly <laughs> what we were talking about i uh, not hurting people by having fun like, that's the best thing you can do and it's also good when you get like a, a group of friends that are all kind of on the same page like no one getting yeah, like yeah. when they can dish it back to you and like that's when you have a fun friend group because it's like things are just flying like like you're just and everyone's laughing and you're and it's yeah that's when it's the best I don't know yeah, I love that I being from New England like you kind of have that like um I don't know there's like a weird like sarcasm like giving people a hard time kind of thing and uh one of my best friends who's from Massachusetts as well she moved down to Virginia and like her and I were in her kitchen one time just like making dinner and just like ripping on each other like oh, you fucking chopped that broccoli. Oh, you did? You call that a chop? Okay. And like (laughs) her friend, her friend who's like from Georgia was sitting in the kitchen. She's like, are you guys okay? We're like, no, no, no. It's just like our vibe and how we sort of just like fuck around. I don't know. But like, it's it's all good. But it's that like friend group mentality of like, I don't know. We all know the joke kind of thing or like the vibe. I don't know. (laughs) Oh yeah. It's just when you're all on that same like level and, and same page of like, we're gonna harp on each other like we're all get like everyone has their moment like that's the other thing too is like when you're not picking on like just one person right you all kind of have your moment where someone gets it it's all it dished out equally like that's when it's yeah. fun because you know like today's my day I guess but like I'm coming back tomorrow or like the other day <laughs> someone said something in my friend group and and um and <laughs> she said something to the girl and the girl was like ah. And then she turned and like started ripping into me and then everything was diverted onto me. And I was like, <laughs> and I remember being like, I looked at her and I was like, I was like, I wasn't even a part of this conversation, but like, Oh my just, God. Just ripped me. You just ripped. You just, oh my God. Completely I, have a, into that. I have a really funny story about something very similar. It was at Lost Lands and like, you know, bass heads and like headbangers, they all kind of like, you know, we're riding that wavelength and yeah, yeah, like, yeah excision's dropping that beat and you're like oh it's disgusting it's nasty like oh that fucking baseline you know like we you know you know yeah yeah, um so my friend my friend brought his friend from home and it was her first fucking festival lord knows why they chose lost hands for her first festival but she doesn't even listen to dub she was so overwhelmed she was a good sport though and um (laughs) she was next to me and we were like watching like zomboy or excision or something like that and she was like smoking a cigarette and I turned to her and I'm like oh that's disgusting and I'm like headbang and she's like oh my god I'm so sorry 
and she like puts her cigarette out I was like oh no 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 no, no I didn't I'm like I didn't know that she didn't understand <laughs> it's like no 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 I'm so sorry you know you can do whatever you want smoke your cigarette I don't give a fuck like I was just like talking about the beat was like disgusting I don't know <laughs> I was, no, that's, like, definitely oh, like that's definitely like a first timer that's definitely a first timer mistake right there yeah, yeah. You're talking yeah about I, was, I felt so bad I was like no I'm not calling you disgusting I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> The beat is disgusting. Yeah, no, that's too fun. I'm trying to think if I had, I don't think I have anything from that. I always remember people, some people's faces, like they like get like that. I always have some, the funniest face to me is when they turned to you and they got like the, I don't know, like almost like the stone hedge look where their face is like, like, I, like, <laughs> yeah, like I don't know how to describe like, it other than that. Like, like, like they just smelled shit or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like it, this is disgusting, but it, like, yeah, it's disgusting. And like, the face is there, but I don't know. That face is, makes me laugh every time. The, the yeah. Stonehenge face. <laughs> That's what I call it. I don't know. That's too funny. Uh, um, What would you say of as of base festivals, what would you say your favorite festival is? Oh God. Um, I feel like it changes every year, honestly. It changes right. just like based on <clears throat> Lost Lands <clears throat> every day. But I can't choose, you know, <clears throat> Lost Lands. I don't even know. I, I could never <laughs> no, in all honestly, um, uh, in all honesty, sorry, beer. Um, it used to be Electric Forest and it still kind of is my favorite. However, until I went to Shambhala in British Columbia mm. it sort of like something changed and like it became and I don't know people are going to judge for this but it came like became more about the music when I went to Shambhala because it's smaller and like they have sort of just like a different setup with like their sound and like who they put in the lineup etc um and something just clicked for me that uh that was probably my favorite and I want to say Lost Lands because that's my shit. But uh, I think all in all, festival wise, Shambhala was hands down my favorite. Well, that makes <laughs> sense. I mean, there's definitely, there's also like, like I think of like all the festivals I've been doing, like there's definitely some that like stand out a little bit more. Like something about it was just yeah. a lot better. Like for instance, like uh, uh, Ubi Dubi, like there's nothing crazy about that festival. But like mm -hmm. when it was the first festival back. Right there was something different about it and like that sticks out to me as like one of the okay. best festivals I've been to not I wouldn't say it's my favorite all around but like definitely I get what you're saying with like Shambhala like there's something to him sometimes where it, it like you said it clicks and you're like mm, this mm -hmm. is, I'm, I'm digging this a lot right now yeah mm -hmm. I get that 100% yeah yeah um, they yeah, all have like their there. pros and cons Wait, what about Lost Lands? I said Lost Lands for sure, though. And I, just, <laughs> I mean, Lost Lands. Yeah, let's, I think that's my honest. favorite overall. I can't. Uh, I, I Now, I will say, I went to EDC Vegas. And I, like, to this day, I feel like I went. But, like, I didn't. Like, I went. And I don't. Like, I was just, like, there. And then I'm, like, I left. And I was, like, I didn't really get to, like, process that. And, like, I still <laughs> feel like I haven't processed it. Like, it was so crazy and overwhelming and so different where like i i need to go back i wanted to go this year it didn't work out but like i just need to go back and like just kind of be like oh yeah this was this is the best because like i feel like it is but like again i was just yeah. like overwhelmed and like partying and having a good time as well not gonna lie you know but like <laughs> yeah yeah <and> <laughs> just took away from it where i where it was like lost lands i've gone in i've sat on the hill i've sat at the back of the stages I've chilled, I've soaked it in. I've, oh, I want to go explore, you know, the other stages and walk around through the woods and get pictures on, with the dinosaur. Like I've done everything in that festival. I feel like mm -hmm. I've walked around, I've, I've been in it. I've observed it. I've soaked it in. That's yeah. The ED I feel like EDC is just like a different beast. And uh, I've never been, so I don't know. Actually, huh, fun, shitty fact though, I've, purchased a ticket for edc every fucking fun year of my life what <laughs> you skilled me with a fun shitty fact um fun <laughs> shitty fact about EDC. no i, like I purchased that. a ticket to it every single year of my life since like 20 like i don't know 15 or something oh my gosh yeah just about and i've had to sell every year because it just doesn't work out but it, one year, it's yeah one year if you, you just you need to do a giveaway with it 
You already bought it. <laughs> you would give yeah, away. Dude. And- oh my God. I, yeah, I did that shitty thing where I lost like what, $800 and I spent on a VIP ticket to EDC Orlando. Didn't go, didn't end up selling it and just ate that money. So yeah, I should have done a fucking giveaway. Yeah. God damn it. Turn it turn Why didn't it, I think of that? I feel like, business. wow. You know what? She's done. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> I'm so mad right now. <laughs> ate the money for nothing. I could have, I could have gained like three followers from that. But no. Oh, it'd be more than that. It'd be more than oh well. Because <laughs> I, I, I did an EDC Las Vegas. I did a giveaway last year because I wasn't going, and I was like, I and it was. They I'm so mad. Me, they wouldn't let me roll over my ticket, and I just reached out to one of the bigger festival pages, and I was like, Hey, I got this pay. I got this ticket. Let's do a giveaway. I just want to be included in it. Like, oh, you that's can, a good idea. You can bankroll. You know, you you have the followers. I don't. Yeah. I want to get yeah. rid of the ticket. And we'll just do a co-op thing together. And I gained like, I probably gained like 20, I'd like to say 2,500 ish. 2,500 ish. And then, and then, but then some of them leave after, you know what I'm saying? Like some of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. The smart one. Trickle, trickle away. And then it ended up around probably like 2000, like, but like, yeah, it's a good pop. That's That's such a good idea. Yeah. If they see your stuff and they like you, they're going to stay. So, or, you know. And I think they'll like your design. Don't see why they wouldn't. <laughs> Don't see why they wouldn't. Mm. Um, favorite producer. I'm curious. A favorite producer. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> um. I mean, uh, Daddy Excision. Yeah, that's a good one for sure. And then, uh, did you see that? I, did you see that I missed Excision at Forbidden Kingdom and went to a different set? What set did you go to? Yeah, could you guess whose set it was? Can I guess? Oh, Seven Lions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. How could yeah, you I mean, I saw, I, I saw Excision three times the week before. Now, yeah. I say that to people, I would go to Seven Lions every day of the week. <laughs> I, I feel there. like if you miss Excision at Lost Lands, it's like tiff tiff. But at another festival, you're like, yeah, okay. I My guess that. First Lost Lands I went to, I split Excision's Stop. day one set half and half okay went to half of split it. i'm a big okay good, i'm a big good vibrations this is a funny story, this oh, okay. is a funny story. i'm a big good vibrations fan per, uh yeah fan so slander back-to-back nightmare big fan of that that mm-hmm. combo really good and they go really hard i have yet to see a full set of that and this is my story so lost lands i split it because i was like okay i gotta go check out excision then at Buku, one of my friends had an emergency incident and we had to leave. Oh no. And it was like 20 minutes. In the, the set was fucking bonkers. And when we like 20 minutes and we had to leave. Not a big deal. Oh, okay. That, that, that happened to me at a uh, he who shall not be named electric forest set. That happened to my friend and we had to bail. So it, it happens. It happens. I get it. it does you happen. gotta be there for your friend. <laughs> Ultra. <laughs> this year, 2022, I go. It's a good vibration stage takeover dumbass or oh, here they have a special guest at six o'clock and i'm like we're talking about it the whole way up and my buddy's like it's probably i hope it's nightmare and peekaboo nightmare played later that night so nightmare and peekaboo standard played the next day so a yeah. nightmare and peekaboo blah 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 and i'm like yeah, yeah i guess it could be and i'm like it's probably a good vibration set and he's like oh that'd be sick but I, I don't think so blah 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 whatever I leave. We leave. So this is this is this is this is what fooled us. Space Lace is on, and he's like, "There's like ten minutes left of his set," and he's like, "Who wants me to go back to back with blah blah blah?" And I'm like, and then we looked at each other, and we're like, "That's the back of back. That's the special but back to back. They're gonna start it early." So we left. Was it at the Good Vibration it was stage? Was at the Good Vibration stage. Oh, we left. I, I would have done the same thing. I open, Wait. I go to we we go and sit at Weathen, which is fine. He's cool, chill vibe. We go and sit. I open Twitter the next day, and it's oh my god, a good vibration special oh, special no. set, and it's them coming up like, oh, it's from Miami. Are you ready to go? And I'm like, oh no, I no, but it. like, come on, oh. again. I still haven't oh. seen a full set now. But you you know why that happened though to you, Babs, is because when you finally see a good vibration set it's going to be the fucking perfect environment the perfect setting the perfect time 
it's going to be maybe, maybe like like raining a little bit lightly or like they're going to like release <laughs> their fucking new VIP IDs IDs yeah, I don't know yeah. it's just gonna like set you up for success so even though you keep missing it like I feel like you'll uh, find redemption eventually and it will be perfect I hope it'd be nice do you have an artist like that that you just can't seem to catch like we have another buddy <clears throat> quick tidbit to give an example we have a buddy that loves like likes Riot 10 every time has missed Riot 10 every festival we he finally saw him for like the first time but it was only during a it was doing a back-to-back but every other time like Millennium would be playing or someone else big and we would all go see that artist and he'd be like i'm not going by myself he's someone who doesn't want to go off by himself i'd be like peace but like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but like so, but he's someone who wants to like hang with the group and he would uh, file go to Millennium and blah 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 yeah yeah uh i don't know it's not not anyone i can really think of um i i remember forest like the last what was it 29 or maybe 2018 I can't remember um I saw Fisher who I've been like missing out on for a while and I was excited to see his set uh I was like all my friends had like gone to like holy shit and all that shit and they were like yeah okay Fisher big deal we've seen him a million times and I was like raging I was like yes like I fucking love this song my friend hears me and she's like oh is it your first time hearing it live I'm like can you not? <laughs> Can you just let me enjoy it? <laughs> but euphoric, oh, bitch, you better be joking. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's too funny. Go sit down. <laughs> Fisher, I can't uh, no. you as a house. I was house like really thing. mad one time. Um, oh, fuck. Dead Mouse's techno, Dead Pilot. Um, Dead Pilot You're played. Dead Mouse? What? You're in the Dead Mouse? Dead Mouse? Whatever. Dead Mouse 5? Yeah. Who? No, 5. I don't oh, know. God. No, oh. I don't. I don't, I don't know that person. Um, That's a shock. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. We have a buddy in our <laughs> I know, group. right? What, buddy... uh, oh, what could make see, you? I didn't see that. <laughs> I, mean, I'm not, I don't know every tattoo you have. I'm sorry. <laughs> I showed it earlier in the podcast. You, you just went like this. There's a, there's a, there's a ton of them. <laughs> yeah, be quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, we have a buddy who really likes him, and we always mess with him because he'll go off and see him, and we're like, eh come on just for 15 minutes we're like no <laughs> oh no yeah that was my friends they were like we're gonna go explore the forest i was like yeah but techno dead mouse and they were like no the forest <laughs> i mean he's got a big following I, we i just think i had a bad experience with him so i it was for ebc orlando 2019 day one of the festival it was rainy and overcast all day and i um I, I can share that. Now. I had a horrible trip that day. Um, and, uh, oh. and I'm like coming out of the end of it and it's raining and we're at, we go to that. I don't know why I'm going to be honest. Uh, and we went there and I just remember staying there in the rain. Like, just, that's lousy. I'm, I'm ready to go home. And it was the end of the night. So we had been there for like, oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, at least six hours at that point. And I was just like, I just want to be warm and like in bed and just, dry <laughs> dry yeah yeah um well listen we've done it probably about an hour or so something like that i have no idea we've had a fun time though uh i loved having you on um I, thank you no thank you for taking time out of your day coming on for the first time this has been fun we've got so much more to still talk about honestly um but i gotta get going here so we gotta call it on the end but tell everyone where they can find your designs and your merch at and all that fun stuff and and we'll also make sure that I put it into the podcast description. But go ahead and tell them. Yeah, for sure. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. It's just Sunny K Designs. Um, that's S O N N Y, the letter K, and the word designs. Um, and then you can shop my stuff at it's an Etsy store, Etsy.com slash shop slash Sunny K Designs. We'll make sure that's in the description too. But honestly. Yeah. Carla, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Oh, it was so much fun. Have you as a, as a good friend and someone who can design stuff. Maybe we'll collab on some merch in the near future. I would love that. Cool. Yeah, we're going to get some things moving here. But awesome. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Peace.